Okay, it's going to be my top 10 AEW matches of 2021 so far. So let's get right into the list. At number 10, we got the Inner Circle versus the Pinnacle from Blood and Guts. This was the War Games match from the beginning of May on Dynamite. So, yeah, you, you know, I, I would have preferred this to be at the pay-per-view. I, I think by the time he got to the pay-per-view with the Stadium Stampede, it just felt a little bit redundant, you know, to go back to a uh, standing stadium stampede, especially with that atmosphere, with that crowd. But, you know, the Blood and Guts match, you know, did a monster rating. I thought MJF got incredible heat. I mean, when's the last time you heard asshole chants uh, in the crowd just for one guy? Uh, you know, the ending with Jericho taking the bump off the cage was was very well done. It just it just felt fresh. You know, first time seeing the War Games match in AEW, I believe. Uh, the the match was just really cool. Uh, I did feel like they were holding back a little bit. It 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 did it did not feel like they were, you know, really going all out in terms of delivering a blow off match. So, um, so yeah, man, would have preferred this to be at the pay per view, but you know, s still very positively received, and uh, you know, people seemed to enjoy it. Sparked a lot of interest. So, I got the Inner Circle Pinnacle from Blood and Guts. At number 10, uh, number 9, I'm going to go with the Casino Tag Team Royale. This is from uh, Revolution. Uh, I thought this was underrated. You know, this was just a great showcase for all the tag teams in AEW. Really kind of uh, showcases, uh, you know, how much depth uh, the division has. Uh, so it kind of got off to a slow start in the beginning. But, you know, as the match w goes on, you know, you see more and more of the better tag teams. Uh, ultimately, Pac and Ray Phoenix won this thing. Uh, to get themselves a title shot against the Young Bucks. But, you know, there was just some good individual performances. The, the one that really stand out, uh, stood out was actually John Silver. I thought he looked great. But, uh, yeah, Pac and Ray Phoenix go over. And, uh, yeah, it really carried that undercard to uh, Revolution. At number eight, I'm going to go with Kenny Omega versus Ray Phoenix from New Year's Smash. Uh, so this is Kenny Omega's first title defense. And, uh, yeah, you know, Ray Phoenix was a great opponent for the first title defense. I just think this is probably the most attractive combination AEW can deliver. I think down the road, uh, when it's not that predictable, they should definitely go back to this. I think the problem with this match was it was way too predictable. You know, I don't think anyone thought Kenny Omega was going to lose his first title defense. So I think definitely think that hurt the match. Plus, you had a lot of interference here. But uh, yeah, nowhere near a five-star match, though. I, I, I swear to God, if, if Meltzer gave this thing five stars, I just... <laughs> I don't know. I, j I just think something is really... This has got to be the worst five-star match he's ever rated. Because, you know, the, the match is great and everything. It's a great main event. I, I did think it was kind of overshadowed by, you know, the NXT match be between O'Reilly and... Uh, uh, was it O'Reilly and Finn Balor from uh, New Year's Evil? It just seemed like more people uh, thought NXT, you know, delivered a better show there. But, uh, but, yeah, Omega and Ray Phoenix, you know, it's it was still a breathtaking main event for what it was. I, I just I just I just think to give a match like this five stars, it's just it's just a little bit. I just think you're asking a little bit too much for that. But uh, I don't know. Did, did, did Meltzer really give this thing five stars? I'm not sure. Uh, so at number seven, we got Pac, Ray Phoenix, John Moxley uh, taking out Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers. This is from uh, February 3rd. Uh, yeah, really underrated match. You know, I, th I thought AEW kind of got off to a slow start uh, in January. You know, you had a lot of celebrities coming in, you know, a lot of weird stuff going on. Uh, they kind of went back to basics here. They, they, they just kind of showcased, you know, their best talent in this main event right here. Um yeah, I mean, just it was it was just great stuff, you know, b b between uh, both teams in the six man tag. It kind of had like an AEW versus Impact type of feel. Like I guess that's what they were going for here, and uh, yeah, it came off great. It was kind of overshadowed by the Kenta match the very next week, but I, I actually thought this was the better match. Just, just definitely had better action, just vintage uh, AEW action right there. Like that's that's the type of match you watch AEW for, you know, that type of talent. Uh, number six, I'm going to go with the Young Bucks uh, taking on Pac and Ray Phoenix from April 14th on Dynamite. So, yeah, you know, uh, Pac and Ray Phoenix won that uh, that tag team battle royal at Revolution. And, uh, you know, you had to wait a while. You had to wait almost two months to get the, uh, the, the championship match with the Young Bucks. But when you finally got it, you know, I, I think Pac had an injury. It, it, it felt like there was too much time. It maybe lost a little bit of buzz uh, leading up to this match. I think it could have main evented. Obviously, it could have used a better crowd. Uh, but, you know, still still a great match to open up Dynamite. The, the reverse Rana spot is, is definitely one of the, the highlights of the year in terms of creative wrestling spots. And, uh, you know, Ray Phoenix 
used the ropes beautifully in this match as he usually does i thought him and Pac actually wrestled a good match here um you know th this is when the young bucks were going to be in more heels that, that they took off ray phoenix's mask I, you know they really did come off like pricks there uh you know the match is a little bit overrated i, I think i kind of overrated it I, I think four and a half is is a little bit too high for that but uh, you know, still an awesome match to kick off Dynamite, and it was, it was pretty anticipated. You know, I think a lot of people thought, you know, Pac and Ray Phoenix going for the belts. It just, it was just an engaging title shot right there. So I got that at number six, and number five, I got Kenny Omega versus John Moxley from Revolution. This is the exploding barbed wire death match. Yeah, great main event. I, I thought it was different. I thought it was something we had never seen before, at least in the United States. And yeah, it, it, it came off great. You could feel the tension. You could feel the hatred. It was, you know, these, these guys have had plenty of matches before, so they had to do something different. And, you know, it, it just, at the time, I, I said to myself, man, it's like, how, how many times can you go back to Omega versus Moxley? But they still pull off a good main event here. Very compelling. I feel like it's kind of going to go under the radar because of the ending. Uh, I don't think the ending should take away from some of the great work that they did here. I thought it was violent. I thought it was. I thought both guys took a risk here, and uh, it, it it definitely came off great. You know, some of those explosions, like like even the foot on the rope. Um, the, I, I I think it was Mox. He got his foot on the rope. And uh, and the, and you heard the explosion just by having the foot go on the road, rope. It was just like stuff like that was just, I just thought it was pretty cutting edge, you know, that whole match right there. So let's move on to number four. We got Kenny Omega uh, taking on Pac, taking on Orange Cassidy. This was from Double or Nothing. Uh, good match right here. I love the combination. You know, Omega and Pac is a, it's that's kind of like the... The uh, the go to combination for AEW when you're when they're they're, they're they're lacking in terms of you know delivering something fresh you could always go back to Omega and Pac you know that's kind of like their flare steamboat of AEW and throwing in Orange Cassidy you know it's uh, you know Orange Cassidy is a up and coming star and so it felt refreshing uh, for him to be in this match this is great exposure for him I thought everything about the match was great you know I I, ju I just thought it they had freedom. I, I've, I felt like uh, there was a lot of creativity here. Uh, you know, even Orange Cassidy, the, the the spot off the top rope where he he blocked Omega's offense by by putting his hands in his pocket. I I thought that was awesome. I thought that was really creative. Um, yeah, I mean the the match was just a lot of fun until the ending though. I just thought the Don Callis interference was just a little bit. Uh, I don't know. I, I I just I just thought it took away from the match. I thought it was unnecessary. Um, you know, I, I think having Orange Cassidy in this spot was, uh, you know, good enough for him. I don't think he needed to overprotect anybody. You know, it's well documented that Kenny Omega is a heel. I just think wrestling at this stage, especially the first time he got a crowd back, you know, putting on a great match should have took precedence over, you know, any t type of storyline building or, you know, Don Callis interfering. I don't know. It just just felt bush league to me. I you know all those championship belts out there. It just you know it just kind of ruined what was a very competitive and engaging match. I it didn't ruin it, but you know I, I, I just felt like it. You know that whole ending could have been a little bit better. But uh, but yeah, it's, it's it's still a great triple threat main event. It had a refreshing feel. It was, and uh, I I was a little bit like curious like who omega was gonna um you know challenge at double or nothing i thought maybe you go back to jericho you, know, you definitely can't go back to moxley but uh but yeah i, I think the Pac and orange cassidy combination it definitely worked it, it definitely you know, you know you were able to put omega up in there with someone he's comfortable with and then you add in orange cassidy it, it just added for a a uh, a nice mix of a uh, triple threat match right there then number three i got dr Britt baker taking on Thunder Rosa from March 17th. Uh, this is a lights out match. And uh, yeah, you know, it's really the match that Britt Baker uh, needed. Obviously, she's uh, got a great look. She's got a uh, uh, great uh, gimmick. I mean, you know, she, she definitely has a superstar written all over her. Uh, obviously, she could sell T-shirts and, and attract a lot of new fans. But, you know, from a wrestling standpoint, it just seems like there's been a lot of setbacks. There's been injuries. You know, maybe she's really needs to work on her craft a little bit more uh, you know you know you, you it, it's kind of like they were a little bit hesitant you know to really you know give her the full push right away but you know i just think this is kind of the match that she needed 
Um, you know, it was just it was just very over the top in terms of the violence, uh, very courageous in terms of uh, you know taking all these uh, spots right here. So yeah, the, the match definitely just did a lot for uh, Dr. Britt Baker uh, and, and Thunder Rosa as well. I mean, it it, it definitely it definitely got a lot of buzz. I mean, anytime uh, you can start selling T-shirts after some of the visuals from the match. It means the match was definitely a success. So that's Dr. Britt Baker versus Thunder Rosa. I got that at number three. At number two, I'm gonna go with the Young Bucks taking on John Moxley and Eddie Kingston. This was from Double or Nothing. Yeah, I mean, with this match right here, it, I know it was the second match on the show and maybe it was a little bit overkill considering it was that early on the show, but I thought the crowd was great here. You know, Moxley really energized his crowd with his facial expressions and hot tags. You know, Eddie Kingston is out there wrestling in front of the biggest crowd he's wrestled in front of. You know, it was uh, your typical Young Bucks overkill match, but it was pretty awesome. It was definitely a nice return to, uh, to, to such an amazing environment right there. So, yeah, that's Young Bucks, Moxley, and Eddie Kingston. To me, that was the best match from uh, Double or Nothing. I mean, the, the triple threat match was cool. I just felt like that match was a little bit more satisfying. And then at number one, I got Kenny Omega versus Jungle Boy. This this was from Saturday Night Dynamite on June 26th. Uh, yeah, I, I love the match. And, you know, they kept it minimal with interference. It, the, the match was not overkill. Um, it, it, it wasn't overkill in terms of spots or near falls. I, I just thought this was just a, you know, just a straight-up competitive match right here. I thought Jungle Boy looked like he belonged. I, I think Jungle Boy's execution has improved a lot and uh you know it's just i don't know what it is maybe, maybe i feel you know it, it really does feel to me like you know this is luke perry's son out there you know in, in the biggest match of his life you know maybe that connection to his father makes me appreciate the match more than you know most people but yeah i, I thought this was great I, I you know kenny omega comes out there with all those championship belts he looks unbeatable uh, just the look on Jungle Boy's mom's face after, you know, Omega pins with the one-winged angel. I mean, she just looked deflated. And it to me, like, the match was great for Jungle Boy, but it was also good for Omega, too. Like, it, it just made Omega look like an unbeatable force. And I, I just think that's what he kind of needed. It, it, it did definitely seemed like that was missing from his reign so far. And, uh, yeah, I thought it was competitive, athletic. And uh, yeah, just it's just one of those matches where I don't think they abused anything, and it's it's it just it still came off really good. So really underrated stuff. I think the match deserves a lot of attention, and it's probably not going to get that much attention because it's you know there there wasn't anything about it that was like you know breathtaking from a you know spot standpoint or. But uh, but to be honest with you, man, I just I don't know that 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 ending just that that's exactly what they needed right there. It it, it really put over Kenny Omega as a great heel, and uh, you know Christian made the save. Matt Hardy came out, so it kind of continues that whole Christian and Matt Hardy stuff. But uh, but yeah, I got Kenny Omega and Jungle Boy as my number one match of uh, of the year so far.